This is Kentucky Afield Radio. This is Ron Rohde, Kentucky Afield's first host back in 1953. Now, I'm proud to present Charlie Bagley. College sports, basketball, football, how about track and field, tennis, swimming, how about bass fishing? College fishing is quite the popular sport, especially when your home court is Kentucky Lake. We go inside outdoors this week to talk with two members of the Murray State University Bass Anglers team. Justin Graben and Vincent Camposano have both fished their way to a taste of stardom on the national level. We'll talk about that and more just ahead on Kentucky Afield Radio. Swimming has taken me around the world. Olympic swimming gold medalist, Rachel Komazar. It's a thrill to swim for your country, but it's another to swim for your life. In a boating accident, that's what happens. It can happen to you. You could be hurt, dazed, unconscious. Being a good swimmer isn't good enough. When fun turns frantic, trust me, your life jacket is as good as gold. Kentucky Fish and Wildlife reminds you, your life jacket's got your back and the backing of the best swimmers everywhere. I am a college student. My future is bright. I know soon it'll be my turn to take care of the planet. But today, I can continue to buy a Kentucky Nature license plate, the plates that say Nature's Finest. Since high school, they've saved miles of clean flowing streams, forests, and in my lifetime, over 77,000 acres across our state. I can't wait to see what's down the road. See you with me. Next time you renew, choose the Nature Plate, plates that keep the bluegrass green. Presuming that college sports are always governed by the NCAA, I don't know is always fair. Sports we see in the Olympics, such as fencing, archery, cycling, we also see on the college level, but they are not nearly as mightily regulated with season dates and recruiting restrictions and as a few of the other big-time sports, football, basketball. But I, for one, am a little hesitant to call them lesser sports. I will certainly keep them on the same level, although they are not as revenue producing. We can talk about sports such as target shooting, dance teams, rowing, but in the college vernacular, these are called club level sports. Bass fishing. Today we are talking to two members of the team at Murray State University. Justin Graben and Vincent Camposano, I am praying that I have pronounced both of your names properly. You're with the Murray State Bass Anglers. When I think of Murray State University, forgive me, I think racers. Is that what you call your team? Murray State Bass Anglers. The Murray State Bass Anglers. Do you have a head coach? We don't have a head coach per se. We have an advisor, Dr. Moore is our advisor. And we're working on getting some head coaches now. We're, we're, we're working on something similar to that. It just hasn't been put together yet. Now, when I think college sports, fishing doesn't come to mind first. How does fishing at all fit into the big picture of sports at Murray State? Fishing in the past few years in college has really exploded. I mean, it's probably the number one growing sport in college right now. You know, and you ask yourself, well, I mean, how do these guys compete against these Division One schools and you know, in football, they have Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three. Same with basketball. In fishing, we're able to go out there and fish against the D1 schools like LSU, big universities, and it's really exciting because we don't have those divisions, per se, in college fishing, and it's really, it's really cool, man. We get to meet a lot of interesting people from across the country, and fishing is it's amazing. And, oh, you're right, a lot of people don't know about college fishing, It's looking really good. Now, Murray State is in the Ohio Valley Conference, the OVC. In there, you have universities such as Belmont, Austin P, Tennessee, Martin, Eastern Kentucky University, Moorhead State. Do you compete normally against those, or is it more of a regional collection of schools? We compete against those those schools that have teams. Some of them have teams, not all. But the ones that do, we do compete against. But we compete against those it's the same tournament for competing against the other schools as well. You know, we just had our, our Murray State Invitational, and that is where schools, local schools from around us come and fish. So a lot of them schools that you were talking about, EKU, UT at Martin, um, a lot of them schools, SIUE, 
come and fish against us. That's open to all schools from across the country, but it's a smaller tournament, and we just get a lot of local schools. Now, when I think about college sports, I normally will think you've got a team, you start practice on a certain day, you have regular competitions throughout a season, and then it all culminates in a championship type of tournament. Is that at all how fishing works? Kind of, sort of. We have our own individual club tournaments against each other throughout the school year to decide who gets to go to the bigger national tournament. Say a FLW or a Cabela Series or a GASS, those tournaments, we compete against each other to see who goes to those. I've got a note here. I would be happy to do the interview, says Vincent Camposano. Justin and I just finished third in the Carhartt College Bassmasters National Championship last year. So that's pretty good. You came in third in the nation. That was a big deal for us. Uh, I know for me, personally, because I know that Vincent actually had won a national championship uh, a few years back. And me, it was the best I, that I have finished at a championship. And we both made it to the Bassmaster Classic bracket, and we both got cut. One of us got cut by two ounces. Example, me. I got cut by two ounces. And, you know, it was pretty tough to watch not being able to go to the Bassmaster Classic by losing mm-hmm. just two ounces. And mm-hmm. it was an interesting week. You know, we could talk a lot about that week. Yeah, and I, and I ended up actually uh, getting cut by four pounds actually to the eventual qualifier to the Classic, Matt Lee. Vincent, let me ask you, what national championship did you win? I won the Cabela's College Bass Series presented by both U.S. That is connected to the Bass Federation, the TBS. It's one of the three series that we compete in. So that was a pretty big deal, getting to compete in that and getting to go to the TBS National Championship, which is the Bass Federation National Championship through that. What cred does that buy you on campus? Do you get more dates in the deal? Let me ask you, how many people know about this versus, let's say, the Murray State Racers won uh, uh, the OVC championship in basketball? Or yeah, if this were football, would it be a bigger deal? You know, I think everything has its own way. We have gotten, I feel like, more attention from people in the fishing industry more so than people, more than students on campus, per se. But everything has its own way about it, I guess. If I won a national championship and I walked into class, I would want people to say, start pointing and say, there's that guy that just won the national champion. That is cool. I want to sit by him. I want his autograph. I want you to autograph my tackle box. That's what I would want. And I think that's what you deserve if you win something like that. You need all the glory that comes with it. And I, tell, tell me what kind of glory did came with that. Well, like I said, we got, to get, we, we got the opportunity to fish in that other tournament. But also, at the same time, I feel like it kind of brought some attention to our club, somewhat from people around campus realizing that, hey, college fishing is a thing we have on campus and that this is something that people can participate in, that they don't have to be six foot tall to participate in it kind of thing. You know, it brings a different interest to college that I, I, I feel like that, may get different people involved, it's not just in our club, maybe in other clubs as well. And what you say about that you don't have to be six feet tall to perform well in this, that can apply to other sports as well. Archery jumps to mind. Uh, you don't have to run fast. You don't have to throw the ball farther. You just have to be a good shot. In bass fishing, you just have to catch the fish. And so size really is, is not germane to any of that. Back to talking about university sports. Is this on the same level, and you'll forgive me, I don't know the distinction. I'll just call them traditional sports or perhaps club-level sports. I I was was checking you all out on the web, and club sports there at Murray State, rowing, fencing, rugby, cycling, clay targets is also on there, and bass angling. Are you all on the same shelf with basketball and, and football or these... Uh, regulated, governed some other way? Uh, no, we're not really on the same level as them. They get a lot more funding through the university, but we, we're we a club-driven sport. 
So to answer that question, yeah, we're just a club. You know, we've got about 30 active members, or 30 members on the roster, and probably about 15 to 20 really active members. So as far as having a season date of when you can start uh, practice and competition and a closing to the season, does that exist with bass angling? No, we get out there year-round. Fellas, they are showing me a red light. That means I have a commercial break coming up. But when we come back, I want to know more about your recruiting for your team. So hang in there. We're talking about college fishing with the Murray State University Bass Anglers. My name is Charlie Baglin, and this is Kentucky Field Radio. This is Kentucky Field Radio. My name is Charlie Baglin. On the line with me from Murray, Kentucky, are two fine men pursuing degrees in higher education, catching a few fish along the way. They are Justin Graben and Vincent Camposano. One thing that intrigues me about college sports is that it's an ideal training ground for the next level. Basketball is notorious for having a one-and-done player. Their stock and their talent is so high that they jumped to the big leagues hurriedly. Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, went straight to the NBA from high school. For other sports, though, it's not quite that simple. I'll be getting into that with Justin and Vincent in just a minute. So, Justin or Vincent, who is the upperclassman between you two? What grades are you in? I'm a senior, so this is going to be my last year at Murray State. And I'm a I'm a junior. I got about one more year left. We got a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores, a couple seniors, and uh, we're going to have a lot of high schoolers coming next year to our club. Also, is bass angling is that something for which you can get a, a scholarship to help out with your studies at MSU? They throw a Murray tournament in the springtime for high schoolers for scholarships to Murray State. They don't offer existing students scholarships to our school. Not yet, at least. We're still working on some stuff like that. But we know other universities that do offer them, like Bethel or Georgetown, to go to their school. But we're still working on that process. Our our school is actually really behind our fishing team. Our president, Dunn, and our vice president, Carter. Carter really likes our fishing team a lot. He's a cool guy. He does a lot of good stuff for us. And My hat's off to them because when you talk about school athletics and school clubs, there is a long list of them, and they all want a piece of that athletic dollar. And I know that fishing is not cheap. Let's just start with something simple like uniforms. Do you have Murray State uniforms for bass anglers? We wear jerseys, and uh, and you talk about that, and it's because we have our jerseys, and they have tons of different logos on them, and those are our sponsors. And their sponsors, they just donate some money to us, and that's how they get their name on the jersey. And that's how we can afford to sometimes send people to all these different events throughout the country. Without sponsors, where would the club be? Could it exist? It probably wouldn't exist as well as it does now. And I don't think the people would do as well as they do now. Because, you know, we get a lot of discounts on products, and we're college kids. You know, we're broke. We don't have much money. And we also, it helps to send money to these events. Like, you know, we're sending some guys to the Big Bass Bash at Table Rock in a couple of weeks, and they're going to get a little bit of money out of the club to go there and help pay for the event for them. Pay for their travel and pay for their possibly some other expenses. You have expenses, uh, and I can think a big one would be boats. Do, you, do Does Murray State provide you boats? Are these your boats? Everything is boat-wide all come from us. We we have to have our own boat, have to do that kind of thing, because we're not like Bethel and some of the others where, where where they do have sponsors that we'll give them boats to use and things like that. So that is something that we kind of do ourselves. So fishing tackle, fishing rods, reels, uh, is, that, is that provided at all by Murray State, or is that your personal all, equipment? All of that's all on us. Yeah, a lot of it comes from us, and a lot of it comes from our sponsors. You know, Prowler gives us a whole bunch of bait. We got Fisherman Headquarters. We got Bass and Gas that helps us out a lot. The community is really wants to get behind our fishing team. They really try and help us out the best they can because, you know, we do live right next to the lake, and this is West Kentucky, so there's not much going on besides fishing or hunting. <laughs> 
Well, speaking of living right next to a lake, you have Lake Barkley there. You have Kentucky Lake there. You also have the Mississippi River. Is there a body of water that Murray State calls its home court? I guess that would be Kentucky Lake. A lot of us call Kentucky Lake our, our advantage lake. You know, does it help out us in some tournaments? Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, we like... We live about 15 minutes from Kentucky Lake, Blood River and Kentucky Lake. A lot of us go out there fishing. I know there's probably four of us out there fishing today, so it's really nice. You know, some universities are an hour or two away from a, a body of water. Us, we can get out of class at 3 o'clock, be on the lake by 3.30, and, you know, catching fish by 3.30, really. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a big rivalry? What school out there do you want to beat more than anybody? <laughs> I, don't, I don't really consider it having a rivalry. Because we know a lot of the guys in different clubs and know a lot of guys in the clubs in the state. So I don't really look at it as a rivalry. I just look at it as we know a bunch of these guys. And yeah, we don't have like a, a defined rival like some universities do. We, we try and get along with everybody, and we have a good time with them. Speaking of college sports, naturally people will think football and, and basketball we've already established. But let's say, let's say Justin or Vincent... Uh, you're a really good fisherman. Can you leave early for the NBA? And if that in, what is that NBA? And I'm thinking it's right there in Benton called the FLW. <laughs> I mean, you could drop out of college at any time and try and go, you know, go pro. But uh, what we're trying to do with our club right now is is to have it where it's kind of like four years of learning preparation because we get to go fish throughout the country. And then after that four years of preparation, I mean, then there could be some anglers that would like to go pro or maybe want to do it. I mean, this is a great way to get a lot of contacts and meet people and see how the sports run. And so it's like a training for them. I mean, you could do it at any time. There's no restriction saying that you can, you know, except for your school schedule. And, you know, that's up to you, really. Where all do you get to go in your fishing endeavors with Murray State? kind of based on wherever the tournament, wherever FLW or, or any of those guys schedule the tournament, like Justin, he's going to have a have a FLW qualifier this summer on Kentucky Lake, and I, I'm going to have one here in maybe a few months or so on Pickwick Lake in Alabama, and we even went farther than that. We went as far as Texas. Actually, that championship that you were referring to that I won in 2009 was at Lake Louisville in Dallas, Texas. So we even went as far as Dallas, Texas. We, we get to go, we've gotten to go to some different places, even some places up north, Detroit, Michigan, things like that. Vincent, where is your favorite place on this planet Earth to fish? I don't really have, like, a favorite lake, per se. I have lakes that I like for certain reasons, but I wouldn't say, okay, say we're going to this lake and, I'm really excited because it's one particular lake, but it's just, I have different lakes for different reasons. It's not really the fine thing. Justin, do you have a favorite spot? Oh, yeah, I have a favorite lake. I love, absolutely love South Barkley. You know, I like between Cumber or Clarksville and uh, between Dover. I know that a lot of guys hate fishing that area of the river because in the summertime it can get extremely tough. But right now, this time of year, and in the winter time, it is, oh, man, it's a great fishery. We catch lots of big fish out there. And it's easy fishing because, you know, fish are really easy to pattern on the river time, river. And they're just a lot of fun to catch. They're big, fat, and healthy. And, I mean, you're not going to catch the numbers like you do or like we do up here on Kentucky Lake. But I, I don't know what it is about fishing down there. I just. I absolutely love it. And then in the springtime when they get in the bushes, oh, man, it's, it's a blast, dude. I, I enjoy it so much. And there's good barbecue down there, too. Oh, yeah, man. You know, the barbecue, there's this, what is this barbecue shop? I'm trying to think of one that's out there on 79, but I used to drive to it after I get done fishing all the time. And <laughs> I don't know if they sponsor you or not, but where's the best barbecue down there? When you, when you go to fish, if you go out for barbecue afterwards, where do you go? Well, um, well, I know that here in town we got Bad Bob's. Bad Bob's Barbecue is a pretty good place to eat, too. I love barbecue. You know, you got me on a good good, good rant here. You know, uh, barbecue is, is amazing, especially around here. I like making mixing my own sauce and stuff, but 
<sighs> Let's go off on a, a, a different sort of thing here. Justin, where did you grow up? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm actually a military child, and I have grown up all throughout the United States. Um, in 12 years of school, I went to eight different schools, and it was just my last few years in high school that I actually got to stay at the same school, which was pretty cool. But that was because my dad was off fighting in uh, Iraq. And, and uh, where was that high school? Um, I went to actually Northeast High in Clarksville, Tennessee, and that's why I like fishing the river back home so much. Yeah, so I've been to a lot of different places, lived in a lot of different states, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Vincent, where did you grow up? I grew up actually in uh, Louisville. To fish in Louisville, to me, means you have the Ohio River close. Uh, if you don't fish there, I'm guessing Taylorsville Lake. Where, where did you like to fish? Growing up, I fished I fish no wind, rough, and barren, mostly. Well, you can lake fish yeah. if you like the big water. Yeah, do you do stream fishing? Or are you a pond fisherman? Do you enjoy uh, fly fishing? Or is what you do what you do on a bass boat on the big water? What we do is basically what we do. This is basically the, the way that we fish is our boats and bass tackle. The sport of collegiate fishing is the topic today on Kentucky Field Radio. We will continue the conversation with college pros from Murray State. So stay with us. Maybe we'll get some tips. My name is Charlie Baglin. This is Kentucky Field Radio. You are listening to Kentucky Field Radio. I am Charlie Baglin, and coming up in a few days, I want to invite you to an event that you really have to see to believe. I have seen several of these, and every year, more and more awe-inspiring. It is the National Archery in the Schools National Championship. We have NASP schools all across Kentucky. In March, we had our state championship. Also in Kentucky, we hold the National Championship. Students from grades 4 through 12 and NASP from across the United States of America will be prevailing on the Kentucky Exposition Center. I have heard 8,000 plus students are signed up, and if so, that will be a new record. Last year was the official Guinness World Record, but I'm thinking, and I might be wrong, 7,800 or so students in attendance. That was huge. This year anticipated to be a little larger. If you are an archer, or if you follow the archery team at your local school, or even if you don't, it is worth a visit to Louisville to see this site. On the line will be five to 600 archers shooting all at once. It goes on for two full days this Friday and Saturday, May 10th and 11th. More with the Murray State University Bass Anglers after our fishing report. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Fred House with the Northeast Fishing Report. At Cave Run Lake, the lake level is close to summer pool and anglers are having real good success catching crappie off natural structure as well as off artificial fish attractors the department has put out. From the reports I've been hearing, anglers are having the best luck catching black crappie using minnows or jigs in the main lake portion. For a map of fish attractor locations on either Cave Run Lake or Grayson, please call our office at 606 603-8650. Musky fishing is also real good at Cave Run right now as the water temperatures are ranging from the upper 50s to mid 60s. Look for musky to be in the shallows as well as in the back of coves. When on the water or even fishing from the bank near a dam, please always wear your PFD. Hi, this is John Williams with the Fishery Report for Southeast Kentucky. At Lake Cumberland, stropper night bite should be kicking into high gear. May is usually a very good month. Look for stroppers shallow or on the surface. You can catch those before dark on dollflies or jigs, and then after dark on slivers or other surface running baits like jointed thunder sticks. Should be right on the bank. Usually have been moving around right at dusky dark, so give those a try. Also, you can pick up a few walleye and they come on that way. Some recent electrofish showed a decent number of walleye in the creek, so I should be able to pick a few up doing similar techniques. Uh, and over at Laurel Lake, walleye should also be good on the night bite. Uh, those fish stay shallow after the spawn and can be caught on suspending jerk baits like husky jerks or rattling rogues or also even just casting small crank baits at the mouths of some of the major coves, especially timbered coves. As always, good luck and good fishing. Hi, this is Kevin Pryor with your Eastern Area Fisheries Report. 
shoreline fishing this past week has furnished some good crappie, bass, and catfish reports. Paintsville, Yatesville, Dewey, and Fish Trap Lakes have been at or around summer pool for a while now. And shallow water is producing good numbers of fish. Keeper sized crappie from one to one and a half foot on minnows. Channel catfish were hitting both bait suspended under bobber, end on bottom, and shallow water. This past week, area streams and tailwaters received trout. If the tailwaters below dams were not releasing too much water, anglers were easily catching limits with small spoons. Looking for spring run of hybrid striped bass at fish trap and white bass at dewey to wind down. Also, some nice catches of larger 20 to 22 inch small mouth bass at fish trap while trying for hybrid striped bass. A friend of mine is a liar. So, I'm going to do what the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife says. Take a phony fishing. What he'll say is a 10-pound bass is really a little closer to the one. Oh, and that fancy rod he'll buy. He'll say he found at a yard sale. All lies. Maybe you should try fishing, too. Don't think you'll like it. Don't kid yourself. Kentucky fishing. It'll make a liar out of you. A fun topic this hour on Kentucky Field Radio, a college sport you may not be all that familiar with, fishing. And the reason it doesn't get all that much spotlight is that there are very, 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 very few spectators. If your team catches a fish, no one stands up and cheers, except for the anglers. In fact, the players in these tournaments may be miles apart on the lake. But fans aside, the team members love it. And they're as dedicated as that five-star quarterback or point guard, I guarantee you. My guests are, from the Murray State University bass team, Vincent Camposano and Justin Graven. So what are your majors? Justin, uh, what's your major? Um, I'm actually a fisheries biologist. I know that does not help in any way for fishing. A lot of people, oh man, you know, fisheries biologists. It, it teaches you a lot about the ecosystem and how things work. But I just actually think fish are extremely cool in every way. I, you know, I don't get excited about, you know, mammalogy or ornithology very much. But, you know, my fisheries classes, I, I enjoy them, and I have a blast in them. Well, that's neat because you, 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 you have it in your background, and you, know, you very well could stay right where you are. You could go anywhere in the nation and apply your skills. Do you have a goal when you're done, the, uh, an area that you would like to work? Uh, you know... I thought about that a lot. I would like, you know, I'd like to start off here at Kentucky, around Kentucky Lake or, you know, Barkley or something like that. Or I'd like to go up to Alaska for a few years. You know, it's pretty cold up there, so I don't want to stay up there too long. And then I'd like to head down to the Gulf Coast and work around the swamps and stuff. So, And I'd like to be a game warden or wildlife officer. I'm not sure yet really which path I'll take, but I guess that's what college is for. Vincent, what's your major? My major is actually outdoor recreation, so so my major is more in kind of, I guess, working with all kind of facets of outdoor recreation. I really want to get in something in the fishing industry as far as, like, equipment and things like that, but we don't really have a major for that, so this is kind of the only option that they had available, so I had to kind of work with what was available. Whatever you do for a career once you graduate... I would anticipate you would still be fishing in your spare time. Is this something that you anticipate doing uh, through your life? Uh, I know that it's something that I'll never give up, you know. Mm-hmm. I hope that, you know, I hope we never have to give it up, and I hope I'm healthy enough to do it for my whole life. If you are a tournament fisherman now in college, it seems reasonable that when you're out working for a living, raising a family, what have you, that you could do some weekend tournaments and apply what you've learned to making a little fun money on the side. Is that, is that under your mind? Oh, yeah. yeah. We still think about fishing tournaments whenever yeah. we graduate. Just love some local club tournaments, you know. Is there a busy season for college fishing? Pretty much from about now all the way through summer, pretty much. So you're saying the spring season, early spring through summer. Yeah. How about fall fishing? Does it apply there? Well, we have uh, four club tournaments a semester. We have four club tournaments in the fall semester and four club tournaments in the spring semester. So kind of like Dustin was telling you earlier, we pretty much, by the time that 
all the other stuff gets done in the summertime, we come back to school, we have club tournaments. And then we have club tournaments all the way till Christmas. And then we have that month break during Christmas break. And then we'll have other club tournaments and then all the stuff uh, recycle back over once summer comes back around. Is Murray State having a winning season this year? Oh, uh, we, we hope so. We, we got a lot of good guys that are going to be fishing these events coming up. And we hope that this year we get, you know, another national championship, hopefully, or we we got some good guys coming this year, and hopefully it all works out. What do you win when you win? Do you do you actually win money, or do you win trophy, or what? Cost fishing, there's three different brackets that we fish. There is the Boat UX, there is the BASS, and the FLW. And all of them are the big ones, have no entry fees. So that's good for us college kids, you know, they... They get their sponsors to put up a little bit of money and some prizes for us. Now, like the Boat U.S., you win, you know, if you win a national championship, you could win a couple thousand dollars. Not much money, you know. I mean, it's a lot of money, but not like, like what the pros make. Nothing like 100000 a year. BASS is the same way. You know, it's a no-entry fee tournament where we get to fish, and they give us a little bit of money if you win or if you do well. FLW is the same way, you know. They're all set up where you can make just a little bit of money just to cover enough for your gas throughout the year or something like that. And they give away a lot of prizes, you know, a lot of life jackets, a lot of rain jackets, a lot of baits, you know, a lot of fishing lines, a lot of good stuff, some fishing rods, some reels. I mean, if you go to these tournaments, usually you're going to get your your gas money back, at least in some of the prizes that they give out. Because they do give out a ton of stuff. The sponsors really help us out. Their sponsors really help them out, and they donate a lot of things for us. If you were a football player, you couldn't take a penny of that, as I understand it. So the NCAA doesn't have a hand in the fishing part of college sports, do they? Not yet. You know, I get that question all the time from people that are trying to figure out what's going on with this college fishing. How can, how can we fish these events and get money? I don't truly understand why we can't get money or why we do get money. You know, either way, um, I guess it's just the way the fishing system is already built and the NCAA just doesn't want to mess with it. I I don't truly know. Maybe because we don't get enough money from our schools to really cover a lot of things to get us to go to these events. But really, if we did not get what we do get, we have to use that money to pay for the expenses for the next tournament. So it kind of, if we don't get something, we kind of have to make up for expenses for the next time we send somebody. There has to be a budget in place, and if the school doesn't provide it or or, or can't, if ticket sales don't provide it, if television time from just selling advertising because your matches are on television, there's no money coming in there. So it has to come from sponsors or would come from prize money, at least to recoup your expenses for gasoline and tackle and, and uh, food while you're there. When you participate in a bass tournament, it's not like you're going into your football stadium or your basketball arena, and people are coming and sitting around, and their income from concessions and ticket sales and T-shirt sales and you name it. You're out on a lake, and you're by yourself, and nobody can see you. Of course, there's some clapping and cheering come way in time, but for the live long day when you're on the water, there is very little fanfare. I will pay to see something that I can stand there and watch and cheer for, but that's not the way it is with fishing. Do you feel at all that it it, it could be or should be? I mean, that's a tough question because I know BASS and FLW, they... Those are the two leading companies. They got pros or some people that follow the pros around all day, but you're right. I mean, it's not something where you could go into an arena and just watch the, the athletes battle it out. I mean, you're out there on the lake, you know, by yourself or, you know, whether you got 20 boats following you, but, you know, they ain't going to help pay for nothing those 20 boats, but we got to get our money back somehow. And This is one of those activities that you may call non-revenue producing. And my head is off for the generous quality sponsors that you have. They really make the world go round for the Murray State Bass Team and and for college fishing teams everywhere. You cannot thank them enough. You cannot use their products enough. You cannot brag about them to your fishing buddies enough. Because what they really do for you pretty much makes it possible. Here is something we haven't touched on 
And in other sports, you will hear that academic infractions or academic violations, do you have to maintain a GPA uh, to maintain a position on your team? We, we, we have to have a, is it a 2.0, Justin? 2.0, yes. 2.0 grade average to stay a member in the club. If we drop below that, we are no long, we can no longer participate in the bigger tournaments per se. So everybody tries to keep up their grade average the best they can. And you also have to be a full-time student. And full-time student as well, yes, I forgot that. So you're a full-time student. That means full-time classes, full-time study. How many days of the week or maybe days of the month do you find yourself on the water fishing? I don't know. I'd say probably three times, four times a week. You know, in the springtime, it could be every single day because we are so close to the lake. But usually when it's a little bit chillier like this, I know me personally, I, I probably only go out three to four times a week. So there's no real social life in your life, is there? Is there time? No, not really. No, is there man. time for dates and movies and uh, whatever? It's tough, man, because we got school all day. Usually, I'm at school eight to nine hours every day, and then after that, you know, either go fishing or studying, lots and lots of studying. And but that's okay. That's what college is for. We're college students. Somebody growing up hears this, wants to be on the Murray State Bass Anglers team. How do they get in touch? What do they do to prove themselves to be on your team? Well, to get in touch with us, I mean, you can look us up online. Google is the best way to find our website because we have to be attached to the, the school domain. But uh, you can look us up at Twitter. We're MSU Fishing um, at Twitter. And you can actually call our president, which his name is Theron Shaw. His number is 270-871-1814. Um, And our high schoolers, we're trying to get a lot of good recruitment. We got some awesome high schoolers that are going to be coming next year that do well in the high school division, and you know, that that grew up on Kentucky Lake. Um, So they're going to be coming here. Do they go to you, or do you hear about these, hey, there's a great fisherman, there's a great kid, boy, girl, at, let's say, Lake Cumberland or Paintsville Lake? Uh, anywhere else, do you go there and watch and recruit that individual? Well, it's not really a watch and recruit that kind of thing. It's kind of a, it's kind of they hear about it, and if they're interested, they'll come and talk to us kind of thing. We have a few more minutes with the boys. Stay with us. This is Kentucky Field Radio. We are back talking with the Murray State University Bass Anglers. My name is Charlie Baglin. You know, many colleges in Kentucky have bass angling teams. If I even tried to list them all, I promise you I would leave some of them out. So I'll just stick with Murray for right now. Is your team made up of both men and women? We actually got two girls on the team right now. One of them's doing actually pretty well in our club. She's beating a lot of the boys, and we make fun of the guys below them, but, you know, it's it's all in good fun, and uh, it's really good for the whole sport as a whole to have, to have all of them there. I would think that women would want to be a part of this, not so much to show up a guy, because you were saying earlier, it's not about running faster, jumping higher. It's not gender specific. It's how well do you fish, and if you fish well, then your team does better. That's mm-hmm. true. At the end of the day, when they're handing out the accolades, does a team win? Or do individuals win? It's kind of how the tournaments are set up. When we send people to the tournament, it's usually a two-person team. Kind of no different than like like a budding tournament on a Tuesday night. Say me and Justin, like last year in Arkansas, we went to that tournament. We fished with each other, and then a BSS threw in a twist for the qualification for the classic where we got split up and had to fish against the other people individually. So... And when we were on two ends of the bracket, so if both of us would have made it through, we would end up fishing against each other. So that's really the only time that it's really an individual thing is with them. Well, I appreciate you coming on and telling me more about your team because I think it's great what you're doing, and I wish you both all the success in the world. Well, thank you. We really appreciate it, and we're glad that you let us on here today. Uh, let me ask you one last question. I ask this of everybody. Do you text and drive? No. I hate to see people text and drive. I'm a stickler for that, actually. 
Text and fish? Uh, I texted fish. <laughs> that might be just as dangerous. I've lost a couple phones. So as long as we don't do it when we're driving the boat, we're all right. Guys, thank you. All right, thank you. On the subject of sports, one way to get your name in lights is to set a record. Think about this the next time you grab your tackle box. There's a special report from Kentucky Field Radio. One for the record books, page two, next on Kentucky Field Radio. Most folks who hold a fishing rod only dream about holding a state record fish. Even with a tackle box full of sophisticated weaponry, sometimes the secret to landing a big fish boils down to luck. But part of catching a record is knowing it when you see it. There are nearly 250 species of fish in Kentucky, so angler savvy is often the first clue if the fish on the end of your line might make you famous at the end of the day. Some of the best waters for a state record is the Ohio River. Since 1987, the Ohio River has produced more trophy fish for our Trophy Fish Master Angler Program than I believe any other water body in the state of Kentucky. Farm ponds are probably the next biggest producers of trophy fish. Lee McClellan is the Kentucky State Record Fish Program Coordinator. He says there are 50 current state records held on Kentucky fish. The next record could come from any of the lakes, creeks, or rivers we see every day. For bass, the best lake in the state is Kentucky Lake. And if I'm going after a trophy crappie, I would go again back to Kentucky or Barkley Lake. Barkley has an overlooked crappie fishery in it. Trophy trout, the only place I would go would be the Cumberland River. For smallmouth bass, uh, Del Hollow, of course, is the perennial smallmouth bass king, one of the best smallmouth bass fisheries in the world. From minnows to muscalunge, Kentucky takes pride in its diversity of fish and fishing opportunities year-round, a business that contributes $1.3 billion to the state's economy every year. If you catch a state record, or you think you potentially catch a state record, Again, you have to contact one of our fisheries biologists. They're located in the Sport Fishing and Boating Guide, which every angler and boater should get a copy. They're free. They're available wherever we sell fishing licenses. A lot of people want to contact one of our boating and wildlife officers. They do not certify record fish. Fisheries biologists do. We all like to crow about our catch. After all, what's the use of catching a big fish if you can't gloat? But a license to fish isn't a license to stretch the truth. Probably a tool now in our bag that we use when we check state record fishes might be a metal detector. Fisheries biologist Kerry Prether. Feeling the body, feeling the belly, which would be about the only place you could uh, enhance a weight on a fish. You're looking at shoving something down the throat of the fish. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen. That will get them disqualified quickly, even if it is a state record. That's one area where we don't want to fudge. And you talk about losing respectability really quick. Just like with anything, if there's people who want to cheat, they're going to cheat, unfortunately. But we have a lot of safeguards in our process. That's why we're so stringent. If there's any question, we investigate. That's why it takes us a while sometimes to certify fish. To maximize the weight of your fish, keep it alive as long as you can in cool, fresh, well-aerated water, right up to the time it's officially weighed. Amid some of the other record requirements, make sure you're in Kentucky water. Several rivers and lakes are shared with surrounding states. That's one of the controversies that always arose around the uh, all tackle world record smallmouth that was taken by David Hayes in 1955 in Del Hollow. Evidence came back later that this fish had been tampered with, and uh, the International Game Fish Association, because it was tainted, dropped that fish as their all tackle world record. But one of the things also that surrounded that fish was whether or not it was taken in Tennessee or Kentucky waters. Many Kentucky records were set in the 1950s. Some were set in stone. Some of the fish that were caught back in the 50s and 40s, those lakes were new. And on the lake floor, there are a ton of nutrients that were stored in there, especially if it was farmland. They had so much more to eat. The record sturgeon, 36 pounds, 8 ounces, caught in Lake Cumberland in 54, the record walleye in 58. Lake Harrington surrendered the state record white bass of 5 pounds in 1957. I don't think our walleye record will ever be broken. And that's just my personal opinion. I hope that it is tomorrow. But uh, the 21 pounds, 8 ounces is a whopper. And uh, I don't know if we'll have the conditions to ever recreate that again here in Kentucky. Important to note, Kentucky state record fish are only the largest fish to be caught and recorded. In this aquatic game of hide-and-seek, fisheries biologists believe, and to a certain degree, know, 
there are larger fish out there and that records can be eclipsed anytime by anyone. Any takers? To learn more about Kentucky's fish, log on to the Fish and Wildlife website at fw.ky.gov. Turkey season ends this weekend. I hope you brought home a butte. Last day of gigging and snagging season for rough fish, Friday, May 10th. Mother's Day next Sunday. I hope that's a wonderful day in your household. I'm Charlie Baglin. Come back again in a week and we will go inside outdoors again here on Kentucky Afield Radio.